Very good morning on this, I guess, a real typical Alberta winter morning, and welcome to this Grand Prairie and District Chamber of Commerce Interchange. My name, if you don't know, is Tertius Jenis, and I'm the first Vice Chair of the Chamber of Commerce. We acknowledge the Treaty 8 territory, the ancestral and traditional territory of the Cree, Dani, as well as the Métis. We acknowledge the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for generations. We recognize the land as an act of reconciliation and gratitude to those whose territory we reside on or are visiting. We want to remind you, as uh, Cindy uh, stated earlier, that the session is recorded and we will share a link uh, later in our chat where this can be uh, viewed, um, you know, for people that couldn't make it this time or for uh, if you just want to go and see uh, on certain data if you might have missed it during uh, this presentation. There will be time uh, for questions at the end, but during the session you can always type your questions in the chat. And if you are really desperate to get our attention right away, then uh, you can raise your hand or stand up and jump or something similar. But uh, uh, definitely we will make sure we can we address you properly. Um, today's session is the Grand Prairie Regional College Business Administration Co-op Program. And presenting this are Carly McLeod and Keston Luke from the Grand Prairie Regional College. Before moving into her role as Dean, Dr. McLeod was an instructor in the Department of Business and Office Administration for over 10 years. She taught a variety of courses with the Business and Office Administration Department department, including organization behavior, human resource management, introduction to management, strategic management, and business communications. Talk about variety, so that's, that's right there. Based on Dr. McLeod's learnings uh, throughout her Master of Sciences and PhD studies, her academic and professional areas of interest focus on employee motivation and job satisfaction as well as enhancing women's opportunities and experience in the workplace. Keston Luke has been with the Grand Prix Regional College Department of Business and Office Administration since 2017. Keston has a master's degree in education from Yorkville University. And if that wasn't enough, also an MBA from Thompson Rivers University. Well done. Keston is currently working towards his doctorate in business administration with a focus in logistics and supply chain management. Keston is the lead faculty member for the co-op program. The central part of Grand Prairie Regional College's vision is to be student-centered, which is embodied by this co-op program, aligning with Keston's passion of application of knowledge while learning in the classroom. Please welcome Carly McLeod and Keston Luke. I'm just going to share my screen here. I um, just want to thank the chamber for allowing us to come present. Um, the co-op program is something I've been working um, within for the last four or five years. And it's really something that I believe is very valuable to our community and our region. So um, I'm going to go over kind of our current co-op program, what we have available, but at the end of the presentation, I also do want to talk about how our co-op program will be changing with the um, our Bachelors of Business Administration proposal. So we are attempting to, well, we're in the midst of applying for our own degree here at GPRC. So that will change the co-op program, but we do have um, other opportunities that we think really will, will supplement the co-op program and allow employers to have more flexibility when they are working with our students. So currently our co-op program is, it takes place between the first and second year of our diploma program. So um, it happens uh, in between May and August is the work term. So students enrolled in the diploma program will have a variety of different focus areas. So we have marketing, financial services, accounting, management, and then we have a general business administration diploma. So the co-op, it is a three credit course. So students are getting academic credit for this. So it starts with a 30 hour 
employment preparation course. So this is preparing our students for um, really the foundational knowledge of how to be a good employer, or sorry, employee, starting from how to write a resume that employers can very quickly find information, as well as how to analyze job descriptions and job ads to really tailor your resume to what the employers are looking for. So we always say to students, if you ever have on your resume to whom it may concern, and I'm applying for this position, um, that, that doesn't fly. We need to make sure that we're tailoring everything we do to the jobs we're applying for. So after that 30 hour employment prep course, which takes place from January to April, the students are ready for employment. So it is a 420 hours of paid work experience. That 420 hour number comes from um, CWIL Canada, which is our Canadian uh, work integrated learning kind of registering overarching association. So in order to be called a co-op, that 420 hours is um, their minimum. How that's structured is up to the employer and negotiated between the employer and the student. So when we look at this, um, I like to focus on the benefits to employers. So when we have our co-op students, these are highly motivated and capable students. We do have entrance requirements and a GPRC screening process. So you're, you're getting the best of the best. Um, these students are very excited to be in the workplace and really anxious to learn. So like I said, we do pre-screen all of our students. So Keston is on a um, committee that is made up of business faculty in a variety of different disciplines. So we have accounting, marketing, uh, management expertise on there that goes through and screens applicants as well as interviews applicants to make sure they have not only that academic skill, but also that communication skill that is so important in the workplace. So business faculty will support you throughout the work term, which is again, another really big benefit. If there ever is an issue, um, it's, I always think of it as two points of contact with the students. So often I, I tell the students that if you're going to ask for time off, you need to ask me before you ask the employer. And, and that's just one extra step of, you know, if you're a seasonal employer, is it okay to ask for two weeks off in the beginning of August? Um, probably not, that you're, you're there for coverage. So it's just an extra set of eyes on a new employee as well as somebody that is checking in with them. So they do do weekly check-ins, the faculty member and the student. And so if there's anything that we feel is a red flag, uh, we discuss it with the students. So. Um, they are telling how the week went, what goals they set for themselves and how they accomplished them. And if they didn't accomplish them, then we're checking in and kind of saying, okay, what can you do to be more proactive in the workplace? Seasonal employment coverage, what we found um, with our co-op in the past is these students uh, are highly capable and often ended up being floaters within the organization. Um, I know we have a lot of Employers that kind of start thinking, okay, the student's going to do this particular job, but as they meet the student, get to know the student, what we see is they actually end up being coverage for our permanent employees when they go on vacation. Um, so we had one student that they thought they'd kind of be the front desk um, admin support, and they ended up bouncing throughout the work term and covering accounts receivable, accounts payable, so it really is providing that extra support for your permanent staff when they do take vacation. So um, the other thing that we see as a real benefit is these are very keen students. So often they bring enthusiasm and fresh ideas to the workplace. I know we've had um, students that completely revamped uh, employees, or sorry, employers website um, because he, the employer said, hey, what do you think of our website? And this student gave them the laundry list of things that they thought were wrong with it. 
So that was, um, you know, you kind of have to be prepared when you do ask these students for their feedback, they will be honest. But the really great thing about that was that employer said, okay, then, then fix it. Um, and that is one situation where after the work term was done, the employee continued to work for the employer part-time as he finished his school. Because again, he was so happy with what he was doing with the website, he wanted to make sure that that was maintained. So it turned into a part-time job as the student finished his education. Um, it also gives you as an employer, the opportunity to have a direct influence on the educational process. We love community involvement when we are making programs, adapting programs. So we look to employers and the community to tell us where there's gaps. So we hear loud and clear that communication skills is the number one concern of employers with new grads. And so that's, we're constantly tailoring our programs to make sure we're meeting community needs. So when you are involved in the co-op, um, we do look to our employers for feedback on how the student's doing, if they do see any gaps in our first year of, because the first year in our business program, it really is a foundational year. The student's getting a little bit of everything. So we want them to have marketing, accounting, finance, communication, writing skills. So if we do see any holes, um, or you see any holes in skills and ability, we love that feedback and we do, we do take that feedback and incorporate it into our curriculum. Um, so we do have opportunity to be featured in GPRC co-op marketing material as well. We do like to promote our employers and the partnership because that's really what it is. It's hiring one of our students, but it's a partnership with GPRC and really an investment in um, growing local talent. So we do like to acknowledge that whenever possible with our employers. So when we look at the student responsibilities, um, number one, they need to be professional at all times. Um, so that's something that we are checking in with the students, having them set goals um, and, and accomplishing those goals. And if there are any questions, um, we, we often try and set the bar for professionalism in that 30 hour course. And you know, that if you're right on time, you're late. Um, coming five minutes early, making sure that you are um, returning on time for lunch, making sure when you're talking to people, you're looking them in the eye. When um, you're responding to an email, you're not using emojis or slang. It's very professional with a signature line every single time. Just really the foundations that um, some of these students might only be 19 years old and it, they haven't worked in, in a formal workplace. Uh, an office setting. So it's really giving them that, that understanding of this is what professionalism is, and we will hold them to the highest standards. We, um, sometimes the students will take an online class as they are employed over the summer. Um, we ask them not to take more than one class, and we do make sure that they get your permission for that. So our online classes are asynchronous, meaning they're not um, a set class time. The students work at it at their own pace, but we want to make sure that their employment is their number one fo focus. At the end of the term, they submit a report, um, and this is shared with both the co-op instructor and the employer. So what we do is we have those goals setting and what they learned, um, what surprised them about working in industry, and um, what they feel they could have done different, um, what they really, really were proud of. And, and I love this report. I love reading these reports and getting the students' perspective on, on the tasks that they're really proud of. And I know I had one student that um, she, was, she was tasked with redesigning their filing system. And she was, she was not pleased when the task first came across her desk because she, she said, I want to do more. Um, and by the end of the summer, it was throughout her report of how proud she was of the system she came up with and how by doing redoing their entire filing system, 
she got to be involved with every single um, sector within that organization and see how they're all connected. So it was a task that she kind of thought, oh, I don't know about this, to something that she took such pride in, um, to the point when, when I went to do a site visit, she wanted me to walk through the filing room to, to show me everything she did. So it's, it's really fun to read these reports and kind of see what the student, student got out of the work term. Um, so they have to honor acceptance of the placement and the contract um, agreement between themselves and the employer. So we, we do set kind of basic expectations of the students just based on our CWIL definition of co-op, but between the employer and the employee that is making sure that they are following through with their contractual obligations. Um, they need to be in regular contact with the co-op instructors, so minimum weekly check-ins, again, setting goals and seeing if they accomplish those goals. And the really nice thing about this is we start small with the students that when they first start, um, they can be quite intimidated. So their goal might be just to meet four people outside of their direct work, work contacts. And just setting those goals and, and talking to staff, and it just really kind of has that constant check-in point that we're ensuring that the work term, throughout the work term, the student is growing and evolving and making sure that they're really valuable in what they're, they're accomplishing for, for you. So I'll pass it over to Keston on some frequently asked questions from our employers. Carly, sure. Uh, so I'll start out with the um, the hiring procedure. So uh, Carly already alluded to it, but we have a two-step process that we use to select our students. Um, first off, uh, the students will apply by submitting their resumes. And then uh, we check uh, first off to make sure that the students have um, uh, a satisfactory grade or GPA that we check for is a minimum of 2.5. Uh, and then we check in with the um, or instructors and it's across the board. And that part is to check for um, uh, character and to ensure that the, um, the, the students have a decent equilibrium point between academics and character. After that point, uh, what, we, what we have is um, the second step, which is interviews. And uh, we check for, um, it can be some prior work experience, but um, mostly what we're checking for is interpersonal skills, communication, and uh, just demonstrated abilities to try new things. Um, after that point, um, we go through and we do our final selection. And um, those are the students that we put forward. Uh, for salaries and benefits, um, uh, we, in the past, we've had employers um, provide competitive wages. Uh, for students, and that's pretty straightforward. And uh, in terms of what jobs students can do, uh, Carly also alluded to that part. So what we have are um, students with a wide array of interest and, and um, abilities. We have students who are still figuring it out in their first year. They're not quite sure if they want to be accountants or they want to be marketers or managers, and they're still exploring. And it's a, a very uh, interesting uh, stage to get our students at. Uh, they get to match theory with context. And um, it's um, a point of exploration, a point of discovery. They want to try new things. Uh, they're very enthusiastic. And it's just a, a great time for both, I think, the employers and the employees. All right, uh, you can move right ahead, Carly. All right, uh, so for um, evaluations, um, Carly also alluded to this part. So um, I'll just go a little bit more in details. So uh, we have a, an, an informal site visit outside of the weekly check-ins. And in that informal visit, uh, it goes for about 30 minutes. And I'll spend half an, uh, like half of that time with the student just to see how they're doing, uh, match up what I've been uh, getting from the, uh, the check-ins. And then I check in with the employer. And uh, it's mostly for feedback. And it's feedback that the student can use for the rest of that work term. And it's feedback for us that we can uh, take and use for the future. And it's also feedback for the employer. So it's a, I look at that situation as a win-win-win. 
um, and going a little bit further into it. Um, we also look at uh, uh, how the student is performing on the job. Uh, we look at interpersonal skills, uh, and those are just development uh, information that we can take to not only enhance that student, but future students who uh, will enroll into the program. Um, if there is an issue with any student during the work term, um, we, um, in, 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 upon evaluation, uh, we look at um, uh, the responsibilities of the student, the employer, and um, if there is any unsatisfactory work, we also um, uh, deal with that then and there, and it's dealt with within the work term. Okay, can you move ahead, Carly? All right, so here we have a, test a testimonial letter, and this is from Community Futures. Um, so uh, I don't think I need to read through it all, but I think the, uh, the basis of it is um, the employer was quite satisfied with the uh, student that we provided. I'll just pause for a little bit so you guys can mull it over. <laughs> All right, and uh, the key words I think stuck out to me is um, uh, I, not boasting on our students, but uh, dependable, commitment, ambitious, takes pride in their work, and uh, overall the employer has uh, been satisfied. Okay, uh, we can move along. So uh, for contact information, um, uh, I think that they need that part, Carly. <laughs> I think, it, yeah. Okay, for contact information, uh, my, my email is posted, also my phone number. And uh, if there are any um, questions or anything like that, I'll be there to, um, to answer them. Right back to you, Carly. Um, one thing I just wanted to discuss is kind of the future of co-op and work integrated learning at GPRC. Um, as I'm sure, you all are aware we are transitioning to a polytechnic institute. So part of that transition, like I said before, is that GPRC is in the process of um, the application to offer our own degrees. And we're really excited about the degree that we've came up with. It'll be a bachelor's of business administration, but it will be um, instead of specializations. So traditionally you'll see in universities that you have a bachelor's of business administration with a major in marketing. Um, in order to do a major, you really have to have a large number of courses focus on that discipline. And what we've found with discussion with community members is that um, often with students working in small to medium size organizations is they need a kind of a, a well-rounded discipline or experience with different disciplines. So we will have streams, um, which is similar to a major, but students can take multiple streams. So accounting is the one we're working on right now, um, which will line up with our CPA, but we'll also exploring human resources is a big thing that we've heard from community member that's in need, um, marketing, financial services. So as we move to a BBA program, the co-op will change. So in order to have a co-op in a bachelor's degree, you actually have to have three work terms throughout all seasons of um, the year. So as we transition, we will, we will take away the work term between first and second year. And students actually won't start a co-op till their third year. And then they will take their first in the summer and then they'll have a fall work term and a winter work term. So again, making sure that students get experience in all the different seasons as we know that in different industries, what they're doing in the different seasons can drastically change. So the potential there, and this again, um, I'm talking future because we're looking to um, roll out this in 2023. But the, the future is that 
you potentially could have a GPRC student every all year. Um, that it will be a different student just because they, they do have to go back in between, but you potentially can have, have a student um, all year. And then your last one of those would be a fourth year, a third year and a second year. So the other thing that we're currently working on is with the government of Alberta, a big thing is um, initiative is work integrated learning, but across the board. So the co-op program as we are, there is a ton of value in our co-op program. We really believe in the co-op, but it's focused towards business. And what we wanted is we wanted to um, open up our work integrated learning to all different disciplines. So what we're working on for next year is a, it's called a interdisciplinary work integrated learning course. And what that will do is starting in fall, it's a reduced expectation and it's 200 hours and it can be paid or unpaid. And I just wanted this on everybody's radar because if there is a project, um, if you're working with a not-for-profit and you need a really capable student to put in some hours, they, they require 200 hours, but this is a cross discipline. So you, can, you could get a business student, you could get a kinesiology student, a fine arts student, a computer science student. So we're really excited about this opportunity as um, I think students that are already working in industry, this again will be an academic course. So the student will take a preparation um, seminar, just making sure that they, even if they're volunteering, they understand the expectations in a workplace setting. Um, but the, the commitment by employers is slightly, well, it's cut in half. It's 200 hours and it can take place um, throughout the different seasons. So for this summer, we're focused on the co-op, but the work integrated learning that um, that course will start next academic year. And we really feel like I said, if you have any any events that you're working on, if you're working with any not for profits, um, we would we would be thrilled to have our students involved in those activities and get them having academic credit based on that experience. So going back to the, the co-op that we were talking about, I just want to kind of reiterate the foundation of it is that we are starting right now with our interview process with students. Um, so we will be we'll be going out um, and recruiting students to the work term and are the co-op and then um, interviewing Keston will interview them in the next couple of weeks and then that course starts in January. So in January, the students will start their pre-employment course and we'll start with basic resume writing. And so what we hope to have in January, February is employer commitments. Because then what Keston will do is he will work on fit. So if you have a position that really works a lot with your accounts payable or accounts receivable, we want to get you a student that's really interested in accounting. If um, you have something that you want some assistance in marketing your website, um, again, they're first years, so um, they, they definitely will support, but then we get you a, a student interested in marketing. So that usually happens. We like to have students placed um, kind of mid to end of February. So then that last month of their, their pre-employment seminar, that March is really focusing on getting them ready to work for you. Um, so they would have interviewed with you. You would, often we try and send one or two resumes depending on, um, on the positions. And then you interview the student and then we spend that last month getting them ready to, to go out into the workforce. So again, that professionalism component, um, communication, all those things is our focus for the last semester, our last month of the semester. So I think that's our presentation. There are any questions? Thank you, that was... Well done, and definitely, I think how the college is positioning itself and us as businesses looking at the near future year, this is a very timely uh, um, 
you know, the programs that we will be looking forward to, especially with the interdisciplinary uh, uh, portion you talked about as well. Um, I, if you don't mind, I'll start off with a question, which I think um, is going to be, I, I think it's more trend now that we'll see, um, is this um, working from home um, that um, I think you'll probably be met with uh, uh, potential businesses that would probably require that from the students to, especially maybe in the accounting and stuff, that they can definitely work from home. Um, just want to hear your take on that and, uh, you know, kind of pros and cons of what you see, foresee with that and kind of how that, uh, how you would incorporate into that training uh, with, uh, with the students. I can start and then hand it over to Kesten. Um, I think, so remote will not be new to these students. Um, currently, GPRC is running a high flex model for all of our business courses. So high flex means that the students have the option to have remote uh, kind of zoom in to the class or come on campus. So they do have experience in remote working in groups in remote. Um, I think the thing is, is just making sure that the students clearly understand their deliverables. They are, they are new to the workforce. Um, so it's just going through and, and making sure that they, they understand this, these are your working hours, this is what you're expected to do, and this is who you contact. So that, that pre-work I, I will be completely honest, will be a little bit more labor intensive for students working from home, but they do have experience with remote technology. So they're very familiar, familiar with it. Kesten, do you have anything to add on that? Uh, absolutely. Um, so uh, remote work is, is actually something that we're, um, we're doing in one of our classes. We're, we're discussing it as a topic. Nice. Um, it's, it's something that uh, will be, like Harley said, a little bit more labor intensive for the student and also um, a little bit for myself as well. But um, uh, the student check-ins might look a little bit different if they're working on online, which is not difficult. And uh, the employer check-ins will, will also look a, a little bit different, but overall, uh, the same outcomes can be achieved. I have a question. Um, are there any uh, <clears throat> maybe common misunderstandings between the businesses and, and the college when it comes to this program? Uh, just, you know, some things maybe that that they anticipate or, or expect and it doesn't quite fit with the program and, you, and you, you have to kind of make that clear, clear to the businesses. Yeah, I would say the number one thing is um, so co-op. The, the word co-op is it's kind of standardized across Canada. So when we, when we have this program, um, it's really important that students are learning um, in the workplace what they've learned in academics. So often we have to differentiate between our business administration program and our office administration program. So Claire, and, and I've talked um, at great length with students and employers about this differentiation. And I've talked to students that I, I currently am in a Dean role and part of my job is clerical. That that's just the reality of work, but we do ask that um, students, if they are working a front desk, that they also have some dis discipline specific, sorry, um, job duties. So something in marketing, something in finance, something in accounting, our human resources, um, just to make sure that we are meeting the definition of co-op and it aligns with the program they're in. And there is that differentiation between office administration and business administration. Tanya has her hand up. Awesome, thanks. Thanks, Carly and Keston. The presentation was awesome. I'm so excited that you're able to continue the co-op program this year and um, super excited about this newly imagined one on the horizon as well that's shortened and throughout the year. And I really see, I mean, I see our chamber business being able to um, take part and help grow these students. And I think it's so timely with the challenges that we're experiencing with labor force and 
I think it's just really incredible. So um, I am curious for employers who are, they know it's a great idea and they really want to help. They don't know how, and they don't even know like where to begin and what job to give this student. What would you, what's your advice for those employers or do we, you know, send them your way and then they can kind of talk it through with you or how would you, what would you recommend? Kirsten, I'll let you answer that. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Carly. Okay, so we do have an employer guide. Uh, the employer guide will contain all the, uh, the information that the employer will need to uh, reach out to us. But um, uh, a great uh, touch point is a conversation. Uh, if they send me an email or give me a call, um, because I know the business world is very busy and I'm not quite sure if they're gonna read everything, but um, I'm available for a phone call or an email, either works. Awesome. Are there other questions from the group? I maybe have another question, please. Sure. Uh, and either Carlo uh, or Keston. Uh, just on the success rate, uh, do you guys have kind of numbers where I know it's kind of in in between the the the, the calendar the calendar years uh, from when they start and finish, but of students that, uh, you know, after they've graduated, basically go back to some of the employers for full-time work? Is, is there any numbers for that? Do you um, want to take I, one, Carly? Okay. Well, I don't have exact numbers. I know um, this is a really good problem to have, but it is a problem that we've had employers just wanting to keep the students. Um, so that's something that we often have conversations with is that we really um, want to make sure that the students are returning to school and but um, for numbers of come going back for full time employment I'm not sure I can think of three that I've taught that went back to the same employer. Um, Keston do you. Yeah, I, I haven't kept tabs on specific numbers, but there's quite a few students that go to work and uh, they stay at the employer and they'll probably either go part-time for the remainder of their term or they'll go full-time and go part-time at work. But we've had quite a few of those occurrences. Excellent. Um, can businesses outside of Grand Prairie take advantage of this? I, I'm sorry if you uh, specified that in the presentation, but uh, could you know I, I, there are other businesses you know maybe in the P area around the the Peace Region that uh, would might be interested in something like this. Yeah, it would depend on the student. Um, I know that we've had we have had businesses outside of Grand Prairie. Well, we've had the county. Uh, we've worked with the county before, but beyond that, we have had students interested so it's kind of two if we have a student we had a student that was out of peace river that was coming to gp for their classes and what we did is then we we started recruiting in peace river and so if there is someone that is interested what we would do is we we then throw it out is anybody from peace river so we can kind of do it both ways that if there's a job outside of grand prairie or the the county, then we can look at, okay, do we have any students that meet the criteria? And then we can reverse recruit and, and go get the students to fill that, that position. Tanya. Um, awesome, okay, so my next, well, I just wanted to, I guess, share a little bit of information, but more of just a notion that there's lots of funding available right now to um, supplement the wage for students. And it's not something that's nicely organized right now and really readily available. Um, so that's something that our chamber is working on in partnership with the Alberta Chambers, um, the COPOA, and we have a talent development task force that we're working um, with a lot of great people from around the province to try to help. One of the things we're trying to solve is really making um, that connection between what the community needs, what the students need, what the uh, post-secondaries can provide and also how to access, like an easy way to access all this funding that's available. So that's not a nice little package yet. We're working on it. So I'm wondering, um, do you guys know of any 
current programs offhand um, that we can share for employers that that can supplement the wage? Uh, I'll take that one, Carly. So yeah, we have uh, Eco Canada, and I, I can send you the information right after the meeting. Uh, so that is by um, Angela Huck, who's also alumni. <laughs> so um, yeah, so uh, we have also the um, we have Eco Canada would be the major one. We worked with them the last time too. Awesome, yeah, and we'll continue, like from our chamber side of things, we'll continue to share that information out with everybody as we have it. And we have a few things that we're working on, on in the background as well to help with that. So we'll keep keep on keeping everybody in the loop on that, so. Thank you, and, and that sh short point was really good. They did a really good uh, presentation. It was well covered and it was, it was amazing. It was, thank you. Awesome. Any other questions from the room? Quiet group on a Wednesday morning. Is there anything else that uh, Carly or Keston that, that you'd like to add uh, that uh, maybe are, are good reminders for, for businesses and, uh, and going forward? Um, I think I'll, I'll put my contact information. Um, the School of Business, we're a new school that with Polytech, the pillars of Polytech, business is, is one um, area. So we're really focused on growing our business programs. And part of that is community connection. So if you do ever have any questions about GPRC programming, anything that you think GPRC can um, support or work with you, uh, and your businesses, please don't hesitate to reach out to me um, as I move into the new role of Dean of the School of Business. I, I really wanna make sure that I'm out in the community and meeting community needs, especially when we have flexibility in the streams with our new Bachelors of Business Administration. So just my door is always open and I am always looking for feedback or any, any gaps you have in the labor market that anything, anything that business related that we can support, please contact me. Excellent, I see Pam has her hand up. Yeah, um, this wouldn't be really related to your department. Um, and I'm just wondering if you know the contact of the person in the, in the driver training, the trucking area and, yep. the, and I guess trades like, um, but I guess the trucking more I'm interested in and what's happening with that. Yep, actually, um, continuing ed falls under my portfolio. Okay. Uh, so you can reach out to me and our, I'll connect you with our manager of continuing ed, Christine Kempe. Um, but yeah, and as for trades, that um, Tony is our Dean of Trades, and I can also provide you with his contact information. That would be great. And, you know, actually a session on the trades and trucking and okay. the programs with GPRC, I think would be really helpful to particularly to me, but I think there's a lot of businesses that could use that insight into what's happening at GPRC where those uh, programs are concerned. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I will. I, I'm actually meeting with Tony in 10 minutes, so I will put this on his radar right now. I guess I can just reach out to you then. Yep, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Are there some advantages to being um, a, a relatively smaller school compared to some of the bigger schools and then in working in a community that uh, maybe it is a little easier to, to reach out to, to the business community for, uh, for participation in this program? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll touch that one, Carly. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I, I would definitely say yes. Um, I think having alumni all around, uh, having stakeholders that are pretty close to our school and have a vested interest, um, everything, like it, whenever we need to get something done uh, on campus, even in, in the past, it's not very difficult to reach out to the community and get help. There's always someone, an alumni somewhere, someone who is um, 
uh, connected to connected to the college in some way, form, or shape. So yeah, I would definitely say it's an advantage. I know the athletic department likes the phrase "once a wolf, always a wolf." So I think that kind of goes <laughs> with uh, with business and 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 uh, as that is in that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would definitely concur, and uh, Tanya would would definitely um, agree with that too. Yep, absolutely. Proud GPRC <laughs> alumni. <laughs> Administration. <laughs> Excellent. Any last uh, questions for uh, Carly and Keston? And if not, we will turn it back to our gracious host, Mr. Janis. Thank you very much. And uh, again, thanks, Carly and Keston. Um, I was going to uh, put Kesten a bit off and uh, ask questions about the uh, supply chain management. I see that's kind of an expertise, but I'll do that maybe offline with you. So, uh, but in any event, thanks again. And for everyone taking time out of your busy days, it's, it's, it's always so appreciated that, that you do come and attend these events. So, I mean, there's definitely work that goes on uh, behind the scenes to get this going. So thanks for, for your support as always. And as always, keep your eye out on our website, grandprairiechamber.com, our newsletter, and our social media for future business interchanges. And if there's any area of our community you would like to learn more about, contact our office for, for any suggestions you might have. So uh, with that, have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, stay warm. Thanks again, everyone. Goodbye.